the baseball life of John Lester is an epic story, as if an amalgam of several baseball lives. He overcame a rare form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and a mental block about throwing to bases. He pitched in World Series clinchers for the Cubs and Red Sox. He won 200 games and earned $199 million. Stephen Green slash Sports Illustrated but ask Theo Epstein about his favorite John Lester story and his mind goes to a small moment, away from the glamour and glory that the kid from Tacoma earned but never flaunted. Epstein, as a front office assistant, and Lester, as a second round draft pick, joined the Red Sox three months apart in 2002. They reunited after the 2014 season when Epstein convinced Lester to sign as a free agent with the last play Cubs rather than with the Giants or Red Sox, teams that had won four of the previous five World Series. The John Lester moment I keep coming back to is when 18-year-old Anthony Rizzo came by, Lester, himself just 24, had beat cancer the previous year and was in the early days of his first grade season as a big leaguer. John came to, manager Terry Francona's office and spent half an hour reassuring and encouraging Rizzo in a way Tito and I never could. It made such a big impact on Anthony, and was the first time I saw the caring, thoughtful, generous side of John that became such a central part of his role in the clubhouse and his personality behind the scenes. Lester pitched 16 major league seasons, the last two checkered by COVID-19 protocols and, the grind of those seasons convinced Lester he no longer wanted to pitch, and so he announced he is retiring. There are many ways to describe Lester. He threw with near-perfect mechanics. He is one of only 9 left-handers ever to make 31 starts or more 12 times. He has the 4th best winning percentage. 631, of any left-hander who won at least 200 games, behind only Whitey Ford, Lefty Grove, and Randy Johnson. He was a big game pitcher who in 7 postseason clinching games posted a 2.66 ERA. By sheer determination, which is how he did most everything, Lester turned himself from a historically awful hitter into a rather good one. He had one of the great game faces on the mound, what with his chin rested on his glove hand as he peered in for the next sign, like a Vegas card shark who gave away nothing but supreme confidence, in that way, and in many big moments, he was like his pitching doppelganger, Andy Buttit. Both are borderline Hall of Famers. But the best way to describe Lester is not with a number, 